other than the victims and their families, nobody has a right to be more angry about this mess than we priests who are left. For we have given up everything to serve you. We could have been doctors and lawyers. We could have made a lot of money. We could have had worldly acclaim. We could have had a much higher level of worldly success. But no, we went off to the seminary and we studied for 8, 10, 12 years. I spent almost 12 years in university classrooms preparing. And now, the world's perception of us is greatly diminished. I travel everywhere constantly. In the immediate aftermath of September 11th, our stock was never higher. Preceding that, there was general indifference when a priest passed through society. I fly over 100,000 miles a year every year. Indifference. September 11th came and went. The immediate aftermath of it. A couple days later, I got on a plane. The pilot came right out of the cockpit. As I got in the plane, he ran up to me and hugged me. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad to see you, Father. And I said, I'll bet you are. Flight attendants came out and gathered around like I was a movie star. Our stock was never higher. You know, one of our members had been killed at the World Trade Center, ministering to the firemen, giving them the anointing of the sick. And, and people were jarred into reality. Nothing like close proximity to death to get you in touch with reality. No atheist in foxholes, I assure you. The lines for confession were long. Mass attendance packed. Then time, a week, two weeks, then the scandals broke. And I can tell you that our stock's never been lower. I, I wonder now it's gone from indifference to great acceptance to rejection. Now, you wonder if somebody's going to try to do violence to you, passing through a public place. I told you how the woman snatched up her little child at the sight of me and ran off as if to say, you're one of them. And you're not getting anywhere near my child. Unfair? Yes. There are many priests in that category. Oh, no. Listen, I know way more priests than you do. I've met hundreds. I've met thousands of priests all over the world. I've been a lot more priests than almost all of you. And I can tell you that priests are by and large the greatest of human beings. They're hardworking. They're very hardworking. They sacrifice a great deal. They're faithful to their vows. They're obedient. They're humble. They're chaste. Okay, they're human. Maybe they commit a sin here and there, now and then. It's one thing to commit a sin, it's another thing to live in sin. The vast majority of priests, and I know a lot of them, they're fine, decent human beings, and they're doing a great deal to help get you to heaven. And I know you appreciate us. There are a few who are extremely wounded. The devil has taken aim. And, and struck them serious blows. Why? He's a strategist. Now, does that excuse it? No. How do I feel about it? Am I soft on crime, so to speak? No. No matter of fact, I'm pretty tough. 
pretty tough on it. I hate sin. I hate the thought that someone abuses their authority and sexually or any other way abuses another human being. I don't like that. That aggravates me. That angers me. And I have a right to be angry more than anybody else because that has affected me personally, directly. But what do I do about it? Harbor a grudge? Become cynical? Hateful? Leave the church, perhaps. Leave the priesthood, perhaps. Not in this lifetime. Not in this lifetime. What I have to do is humble myself. I have to say, except for the grace of God, there go I. I have to say, you know what? I have to say what I said many times preaching to inmates in prisons and jails. You know what, men? The only difference between you and me is that you got caught. And I have to have that attitude. The only difference, I never did those particular things, no. I don't mean that, but I did other things that I never had to answer for. I'll answer to God, all right. Oh, I, sure, when I was young, I committed all the sins of youth. And I went to confession. And I was sincerely repentant. But I know that except for the grace of God, I could be the lowest of the low, the dregs of moral society. I acknowledge that. I believe that. So who am I? to judge my brother. But does that mean I think my brother should get off scot-free? No. Do I think my brother should be left in a parish when they know that he has a moral and perhaps psychiatric problem? Oh, no. Get him out. Right away, should he ever be allowed to go back? No. They asked me one day, what should we do? with men who have a history of pedophilia. I said, give them a chance to repent and go to a monastery where they can pray and do penance, but not minister in a situation where they have that temptation. That is imprudent to do. I truly believe that. Now, A lot of the bishops are under attack. Cardinal Law has been criticized in Boston, up one side and down the other. I don't know the details of any of these cases, but I do know it's awful easy to pass judgment on other people. I know it's awful easy to say, oh, he should have done this and he should have done that. You know, the Holy Father called the cardinals from America into the Vatican, and he talked to them, and they said, well, too little, too late. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it is too little. Maybe it is too late. Cardinal offered to resign. Humble thing to do. Pope said, no, I won't accept your resignation. And that's the end of that. It's awfully easy to pass judgment, but it's not very smart, spiritually speaking to do that. Everybody's an expert today. You know, we're all experts in psychiatry. We're all experts in law. We're all experts in theology. But we're not, really. And we've got to be very careful with it. What do we do? Where's the blame? Is there any blame? A ton of it, in my estimation. I feel sorry for everybody concerned. I feel sorry for the people of God. Guess who's paying the bill? You. And it will come to hundreds of millions of dollars before it's over. The money that you gave for good cause, the money you put in the collection basket, some of that, now all insurance will pay for some of it. But you know what's going to happen? In case you don't know, the insurance rates will go up so high that no one will be able to afford them. No diocese will be able to have that kind. Believe me, the days of insurance are fading away. 
Do you know how much it costs for malpractice insurance for a surgeon in the state of Nevada? Over 200000 a year. Cash money. Do you know how much this insurance is going to cost? Our diocese is now prohibitive. Forget it. And guess what will happen next if there are more awards and judgments? Sell assets. Sell some real estate. The judgment, $50 million. We don't have it. Sell some churches. How did it happen? I feel sorry for the bishops. I do. Many of them were not even there when that stuff happened. A lot of these cases are 20, 30 years old. Some of them were there. Some of them are there. Some of them are culpable. But I still feel badly for them. Some of the priests are guilty. This is real. This is not a contrivance of the media, although they're making hay while the sun shines. I read an article where the incidence of sexual abuse in religions is lowest in the Catholic Church, that it's higher in the other religions. You wouldn't know it by the headlines. How did it happen? We were caught sleeping, to be quite honest with you. Like permissive parents, there has been an attitude, and I've got to tell the truth as I see it, there has been an attitude of arrogance in high places, in politics, and in the church. Even where there are good bishops and good dioceses, there can be an arrogance. It is an occupational hazard. I've said that before. I'll say it again. It can sneak up on you. You don't mean to do it. It's not something you will to do consciously. It's something that sneaks up on you. You have authority. Power. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, as the saying goes. Many of us, for many years, warned those in authority. How can this be? Stop it. And we were treated as criminals very often. Like in a case in, with the police. Saw the movie Serpico, based on a true story of a New York cop. You know, there was corruption. He didn't like it. He wouldn't go along with it. He blew the whistle. What was he treated like, a criminal? You know, same thing. I've seen it happen time and time and time again. 